Hello and welcome from uh, Belgium, from Wallonia, the Walloon region for the Circuit de Wallonie. It's the third race of the Belgian Cup, the Bingle Cycling Cup. One of the 94.2 kilometers start and finish are in Charleroi, which is uh, one of those cities in the French-speaking part of Belgium. But we are going to finish not in this lovely city center, but on the outskirts in uh, mont sur marchienne which is one of the suburbs of Charleroi. And Charleroi, for the Belgians mostly, it's uh, known for its airport and all the cheap flights to Spain. Um, last year, this race was cancelled. 2019 was the first time it was a 1.1 race. And all the years before, it was a 1.2 race. So that's the fourth division. So that's why some of the names might not be familiar to you people at home. Um, but today we have an interesting race with uh, some bigger teams, some World 2 teams at the start, but also a lot of the smaller teams who haven't had a lot of opportunity to race. So they will be particularly eager to uh, take this opportunity and make the most out of it. Lovely images of green Valonia with the rapeseed fields there in yellow. Of course, um, this is a race in the Bingo Cycling Cup. This is the ranking, but uh, Tim Malier, of course, is in the Giro. Timothy Dupont is in the Tour of Hungary. So not a lot of riders in the top 10 are here at the moment. But uh, we know that Melier won the first two races of this uh, ranking. His team is here, obviously in Phoenix, with uh, Tamino, Anderson, Meissen, Bayer, De Freese, De Tier, and Plankaert, Edward Plankaert, that is German national champion uh, Marcel Meissen there. Also the Jumbo Visma development team with uh, one rider for the um, World 2 team. More about that a little bit later. That's Timo Rose. And of course, we're also looking out to uh, Cofidis with uh, Christophe Laporte who um, hasn't done any racing since uh, La Flèche Brabanson, but of course is always a rider to look out for when you have um, a finish that might end in a sprint. The riders of uh, Antarmaché, Wanti Gobert, have had an amazing week, of course, with that stage win of Taco van der Hoorn, their first win of the season. And this is their regional race. We're actually coming through Banche, which is the seat of uh, Wanti, the uh, sponsor. Tim Bellens, he is from uh, Sint-Truiden in Limburg, a little bit uh, northeast of here. He's also back in competition, building form towards the next goals of the year. Um, his first race back, Tim Bellens, with uh, also Matt Holmes on the team today for Lotte Soudal. Start given today at 1.30 p.m. Central European time. With a lot of fluo there at the uh, head of the peloton, not only the guys from Bingle, Powell-Sausen, as they're called, but also a team from Ukraine, the Lviv Continental Cycling Team, are in that bright yellow. A lot of blue as well, with, uh, amongst others, Canyon DHB and Black Spoke Pro Cycling, all in that same blue kit. And as you can see, the weather was rather foul at the start. Some thunderstorms coming from the southwest, and that's the wind direction of today. Um, but it seems to be dry. This is the course of uh, today, or actually this is the circuit. This is the second race in Wallonia and also the last one because uh, most of this Bingo Cycling Cup is in the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium, whether it be Flanders or the more eastern part. We have a large loop to go, passing through Bange, and then local laps just crossing that Belgian border with France and then three local laps of 10.8 kilometers with two climbs in there and um, one of them in the 10 ultimate kilometer. Last year it was cancelled the year before. It was a sprint of a group of five actually and won by Thomas Bouda of the Total Direct Energy team. They are not here today because they had a positive COVID case in the team so that's why we start our ranking our start list with number 11 and there he is Théo Delacroix the former under 23 champion of France with number 222 it's Lorenzo Germani of the FDG development team we also have for Tarteletto Isorex number 95 for the Beat Cycling Cup Yves Kohler a Belgian rider 
and this seems to be our breakaway of the day. The names there, De La Croix, Taminio, Maxime de Porter, Yves Kohler and Lorenzo Germani. 89 kilometers to go, which means that the pace has been incredibly high so far. My name is Jose Bain and with me today here on GCN Plus is Brian Smith. Good afternoon, Brian. How are you doing? It's been all right. Actually, nicely in this race so far. Started off in the kind of damp conditions, but it's it's been constant attacks. You know, this group of um, you know five riders, uh, not too far from the front of the peloton, only 29 seconds. Still a long, long way to go. But like you say, you'll say these races are raced right from the start. They're very aggressive races and very diff uh, different to, uh, are difficult to control. And um, you know, you mentioned that so many kind of small teams here. It kind of reminds me of uh, kind of amateur racing away back in the days where, you know, the pro races were a little bit more controlled and the amateur races were, um, you know, anything could happen and it was attack, attack, attack. And who, who's got the, the best legs when you come to the uh, the final? But um, I'm sure this will be still an aggressive race. Only 27 seconds now to the group of five in front. Yeah, you can already see the fatigue there on the face of the Italian rider of the development team of FDG. Uh, we are 110 kilometers in the race and yeah it's been it's been really really hard. Some World Tour teams here, some pro teams, but Brian, mostly these smaller continental teams and due to all the cancellations that we've had in the COVID situation, they haven't had a lot of races and some even none. What kind of difference does that make? Does that make the race more dynamic or more closed? Do you know what? Um, you know, I think with the modern technology and, and the, the training aids that everybody's got now, and you know we're seeing it uh, in, in many races now. Um, in the past, you would you'd go into a race and you didn't know how you would you would feel. Um, but now with power meters, heart rate monitors, all this sort of stuff, that you can have your rest come back and, and you know exactly where you are. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter if you've got that kind of time off. I know it's been very difficult for for a few of the kind of smaller teams, and you know I'm going to include the um, you know the the British team uh, that are uh, at this here at this race. You know they haven't had the you know too many races, um, but you know they they are here with uh, with with intent to try and do as, as best as they can and. You know, it's just one of these things that you have to do it in in training, and I'm I'm talking about the uh, the Canyon DHB team, uh, the, the British team. So you know they've had to do a lot of it in training, and they don't have the budget of a, a big team. They can't go to, to to altitude. They can't do it there. They have to do it, you know, around uh, you know the British roads, you know, because there's um, you know you can't really travel as well. So. It's good that they're here, but it's, it's another thing that it's a motivational factor, Joffe, is the, the fact that you know you have to treat you know every one of these races like a like a world championships, and uh, I'm sure they'll want to compete with the, some of the the best that's in this race today because they don't have uh, they haven't had a lot of racing and they won't have a lot of racing this year. No, most definitely not. And I've seen on the social media that the uh, Canyon DHB guys have been on the training camp in the UK indeed. And it was uh, a rather wet affair. I remember that. It, <laughs> the circumstances were horrendous. Uh, just like here, we had uh, one massive thunderstorm in the first hour of the race. But um, as you can see here with the uh, Belgian rider, Maxime Porter, the sun is out again. We are in the south of Belgium, uh, quite close to the French border, which is, if you compare it to the Ardennes Classics, a little bit more west. The Ardennes Classics are more to the uh, east of the country, towards the border with, uh, with Germany. So we are still in a, well, quite a hilly country because, Brian, I've seen percentages up to 18, 19% on today's course. Yeah, it's uh, not easy at all. Um, it's fairly lumpy. And you know we have been over a, a few climbs already today with um, you know some real strong percentages, and you know we still have a, a couple of you know decent climbs still to come. Uh, with uh, about 73 kilometres to go, there's um, you know one that's uh, you know, 700 metres long. Okay, it's only 4.5 percent, but there's another one that um, averages 5.2 uh, percent. So it's it's one of these. 
um, areas in Belgium where it's it's quite lumpy. Uh, it's up and down pretty much the whole time. But I just noticed when we f first came on air there uh, that the uh, Arkea Samsic, the, the riders um, in the red jerseys, were trying to control things. They have got... Uh, Capio and uh, Dan McClay, the British rider. Uh, be interesting to see how he is going. He's been uh, fairly quiet, so a sprinter, and you know he he likes these uh, Belgian races. But uh, now you've got the um, SEG Racing Academy team at the front uh, trying to control things. So there is a, a little bit of uncertainty um, where you know you don't really know too many of your rivals. It, it, it's, pretty much as, as far as Gumpet says it's a bit like a, uh, a box of chocolates you, you don't know what you're going to get and uh, I think we can say this about this race we have got some some you know top names some good riders to name a few you've got uh, Tim Wellens is here already uh, mentioned uh, Cafe McClay Anarkovsky uh, of uh, Bingo Pals Saucies you know De Wolf and Oliver Nassen from a uh, ag 2 r Christoph Laporte from Cofidis. There's a few good riders in this, but there's a there's a lot of um, kind of unknown talent, kind of development teams, continental third division teams. So it just adds a little bit, a bit of spice. You don't really know your competitors that that well, and you know they want to put up a, a good fight in this race. This is you know just a, a shade over 200 kilometres uh, uh, long and. We've got these three laps at the end. So it's going to be a really interesting uh, race, and we'll see what, what happens. Five riders still in front, it's only 32 seconds. So, you know, there's all sorts of um, teams coming to the, the front. You've got the DSM team in the right hand side in the black with the blue down. That's the, the development team. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about a few teams that we don't, you know, we've not really kind of talked about on our uh, screen so far this year. Which is, which is great. I had an interview this week with Tim de Klerk, and he says one of my qualities is that I can assert when a big race happens like the Tour of Flanders, um, who's a danger and who's not, because I know everybody. I have that experience over the years that I know who's dangerous, who's good, who's not, and that's that's pretty difficult here. Uh, of course, the, the guys from Hagen's Berlin, they, they've come from Portugal, for example, but this team, um, not all the riders who have done Algarve, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting and it's going to be a challenge for, well, for me at least, to um, give you some information about some of these guys uh, up on the road. But racing is racing, whether it's, whether it's with very well-known people or lesser-known people, it can be a great race no matter what. Well, it's the same thing when, you know, I was racing in, uh, in Britain for a, a professional team and it was one of the best professional teams that was in Britain, but whenever we came to, to race in Europe uh, and maybe moved over to, to Belgium or France or, you know, Italy when we raced, and, you know, we raced against a, a lot of the, the kind of top riders that were, were up there and some of the kind of bigger um, European teams back then, and it always made you try to lift your game a little bit. You always wanted to have a few scalps, and, um, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of younger riders in here are super motivated to, to be up against, you know, some of the, the names of the peloton that they see um, you know, successfully on our screens, and, and I'm talking about the likes of, um, you know, Tim Wellens who's, you know, had a, a good career so far, and he is one of the favourites today, but, you know, the, the question is, what is his form like? He started the season fairly well, but, um, you know, there are a few of the, uh, the stronger riders, the stronger, you know, World Tour teams in here, and when you ride at World Tour, you ride at a different level. You know the races are run off faster, so you've got you've got that in your legs. And when you race at a you know a lower division, the the, the average speeds and things like that of of the races are a little bit less. So we we are expecting the to see you know the the World Tour teams try to kind of dominate this, but really don't be surprised if we see some uh, some surprises, some of the smaller teams getting involved with the mix. We have some uh, some cyclocross riders uh, here as well with uh, the Trinity Racing Team. Uh, ben Turner, for example, is uh, one of the riders here. And we, we are getting into that part of the season that the cyclocross riders are coming out to play as well. Um, well, those are, who are not called Wout van Aert or Mathieu van der Poel, that is. They are making some miles in the summertime, uh, although the summer is, uh, or spring even, has been long-awaited 
here in the Low Countries, I should say. We're about four weeks behind the normal schedule, Brian. It's cold. Yeah, I think the same could be said um, across Europe. Um, you know, it's not been great in, in Italy for the for the Giro d'Italia either. Um, here in Britain, it's it's not been great. Um, we thought we had spring a few weeks ago, and then it kind of disappeared. So it's the same for everybody. But you know, luckily for the riders now, you can see they're you know, short sleeves, or most of them anyway, and uh, shorts. You know, you, you the sun is out. You know, everybody's happy, and. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's see what happens in this race. Uh, you can also see that uh, we've got uh, Group Ama FDG, um, the red, white, and blue coming to the front. Really looking forward to to seeing um, how they get on in this race. And you know, there's, there's so many. Well, looking down at the star sheet at the moment, and there's so many uh, riders. You know, so many unknown riders, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see. You know, the the cream come to the top. Some of these uh, smaller teams have got and. You know, you only have to think of Inu X uh, Pro. Um, you know, the Norwegian team, how well they've ridden this this year, this year in, in, in many of the races. So we could see a surprise there. Most definitely, um, they've almost won one of these races in uh, in Samain with uh, Rasmus Tiller, who was second to Melia there. So um, it was almost success for them. These five riders, they um, are increasing their lead just a little bit one of those uh, continental Gruppe Mautig riders we saw Louis Aski come to the front there already of the peloton tried to disturb the chase just a little bit this is a rider from the French speaking part of Belgium Tamino he is new to the Alpecin Phoenix team that is getting bigger and bigger every day they announced uh, two more riders Julien van Moten you know him well Brian and uh, Guillaume van Kersburg both have been waiting five months to get a new contract at pro level, but um, the Rothhof brothers, the owners of the Alps and Phoenix team, reached out to them and said, well, you can uh, you can join us with uh, both Van Kersburg and Vermoten. And yeah, they now have, I think, 32 riders on the roster. The biggest team in cycling. Yeah, I, I, think they, I think they need it. Um, you know, they've had some great success, but I think, you know, strength and depth, they, is a second division team that they've got some quality riders we can see that but then you know you're, you're talking about the race program they've got it's it's very difficult um and especially with you know the the mountain biking uh, and the cycle cross they've got and it's real no surprise and you know they they want to compete at the highest level and they are they've had uh, some great success uh, we can see to Melia in the uh, the Giro d'Italia, so I think bringing two experienced riders in there will will definitely help um, because that was the only thing that's looking at that team, you know, riding at the, the you know the big races like the Giro d'Italia, Tour de France, and things like that. You need riders that with that experience to to help deliver. Uh, if they're going to the Tour de France looking for the the big stage wins, that's what you have to have. Well, you can, and you can bring the likes of Julien Fimota onto your team to uh, ride at the front like he's done many, many times. Trouble here for Jonas Abrahamsen. Yeah, it looks like a front cup. wheel, front wheel puncture here, Jose. He has to move over to the right, though. Yeah, but there's so many cars, and, well, because the gap is still so very, very small, the team cars just can't go past the peloton to our breakaway of five, which will um, eventually become a problem if they can't get any bottles. Now we need to get to the right side of the road. It looks like the Unix team car probably also draw the lowest number, looking from how, to, how long it took. Yeah, that's another thing about these races. The, the World Tour teams, you know, will be at, you know, close behind the peloton and, and then, you know, the further down you get, uh, as you say, it's, it tends to be a bit of a, a lottery picked out of hat, but, you know, you, the team car gets, you know, where you are at World Tour, but then after that, uh, your team car could be, uh, you know, well down the, the convoy. It looks like the pace is slowing down just a little bit, and the riders of Uno X are waiting at the tail end of the peloton for Abrahamson. Of course, he can use the car to come back, which is um, not allowed if you have a, a mechanical issue. Well, he can't get in the car. He can sit behind it. <laughs> but 
Yeah, touche, touche. Uh, the SEG Sech Cycling team there in the um, blue and purple with uh, Michael Zeilaert, Wissel Krul, Jesper Rast. That's three, four Dutch riders, Dan Holen, one from America, Paul Kromi, Dries de Poort and Stan van Tricht. They're a development team and they're also a management firm, a rider management firm. Big riders like uh, Groenewegen, Jacobsen, uh, uh, Dan Martin, um, a lot of big names. And they have their development team. And of course, if you sign a pro contract through their development team, you also have to stay with the management firm. That's the deal. But overall, you don't earn a lot of money with developing riders. And that's a model that we haven't implemented in cycling just yet. If you have a good rider and you lose him to bigger team it's not anything you get in return money wise no it's um it, it's something you know we've seen in the past i'm just watching here this is yeah this is chaotic <laughs> well the uci has tried to stop um, you know riding i don't know is this a bike path or this a pavement they, they, they try to stop riding on the pavement but you know it's always a danger but that's because they're racing towards this kind of small roads um you know the, the next climb is coming up, so that's why we're seeing a lot of the riders using, um, you know, whatever way is possible to, to get to the front. But yeah, that's why we saw we're talking about development teams, and you know, I know we get so many British teams. We mentioned the Canyon team, the other British team, Trinity Racing, with um, a lot of the kind of young Brits, and you know, nice to see they've, they've kind of ventured over here. You've already mentioned Louis Askey of the um, Group Ama FDG uh, Continental team, so it's it's good for them to to get here and to race here but it does look a bit chaotic out there in a bunch. Gap is still only 38 seconds for our five leaders with uh, three riders from Belgium, Lionel Tamio of Alpecin Phoenix. We have uh, Yves Kohler of the Beat Cycling Team and Maxime de Porte of Tartaletto Isorex. Well, one rider from uh, Italy, Lorenzo Germani, and uh, one rider from France, Theo Delacroix. That is our breakaway at the moment but the gap is marginal with 75k to go which means another well roughly two hours of racing and if you look at the profile well the sting is in the tail of the circuit de Wallonie because uh, the climbs are coming and they're coming fast big cycling in the green and black was actually the team that Tago van der Hoorn signed a contract with in December uh, nobody wanted to sign him after Jumbo Visma told him that there was no room in the team anymore. So he signed with this team, a third division team, which has a house with uh, Jan Willem van Schip, who's also part of his team. And then a week later, there was this lifeline from uh, Antar Maché. And, well, we all know what happened earlier this week. That was quite something, Brian. It doesn't happen a lot, does it? It was, and um, he's also got uh, quite a good neighbour as well with uh, Van Vleuten. Um, so yeah, it's you know I think you know when we when we look at <clears throat> the Giro d'Italia, don't want to give too much away. It's been a you know a very interesting start for a, a lot of riders, and you know good to see them you know ride at that level. And when you hear stories uh, like uh, Tackle Van der Horn, almost what five months ago he was, he was considering uh, giving up um, cycling. Uh, good to see him right at the. Uh, the pointy end, but talking about the pointy ends, we're talking about the, the World Tour teams, the stronger teams coming to the fore. Um, Kofidis is there in the uh, the white and the red. The red is Arkea Samsic in the right hand side, including a former British champion Connor Swift. In the middle there, you can see EG2 two are getting involved. But you can also see a lot of the teams that we've been talking about, the, the smaller teams, starting to kind of push and shove and, and use these teams to try and come to the front for a good position. Yeah, and then you can see that that gap of 35, 40 seconds is gone in just a matter of time. Our first climb is uh, coming up pretty soon, and there it is, Domaine de Pumont, 7.4% average. And these are the small roads that you're referring to, uh, Ryan. Yeah, it's the same all the time when you've got uh, quite a large field. Um, you know, it's very important to get to the front. You never know. It's still a long way to go to the finish. You'll say it's, you know, just under 74 kilometres. But it's one of these uh, situations where if you relax in the peloton and, and, and 
a group does go um, and you miss it, it, you know, your race could be over. You could be kind of chasing all day. And, you know, we are starting to see some of the kind of stronger teams uh, come towards the, the fore and, and start to push on now. So you never know um, what's going to happen. You get position and you fight for position. It's always best to make that effort to get a good position because if the, the counter move goes with some strong teams in it, you want to be there. The uh, sports directors can't follow on this uh, very narrow climb. They have to take a little detour. So you have, you have, if you have a mechanical, you have a problem. Uh, well, the stronger teams are getting to the front with both Kofidis and Lotus Udal and struggling at the back is uh, the rider with 182, Josh Teasdale, the British rider for the X-Speed United team. Interesting little climb here, little dig. It's not very long, but it's the first one of many of these short punches that will really whistle down the peloton of 161 riders today, 25 teams at the start line. 26 were planned, but like I said, there was um, a positive COVID case for the uh, Total Direct Energy team. Trouble there for um, time trial specialist Lars Bova been on the podium at the European Time Trial Championships the same day his girlfriend became European champion so that was uh, quite a happy day in the household. He's the son of Jumbo for the uh, sports director of Jumbo Visma. But he's gone and uh, we have caught the breakaway which means a new race situation is going to happen from now. Tom Till, the very tall rider from Luxembourg there is uh, clearly struggling on these climbs and well if you know Luxembourg just a little bit there's tons of these climbs in the country but he's, but he's a big guy he's a the big thing guy is now as you'll say the, the elastic starting to stretch now you can see gaps uh, appearing everywhere and towards the front I think it was um, Tim Wellens uh, was starting to show his face and you know the the race is really on, and you know you you've got the the inclines, but you also on the small roads got um, some of the the descents here that are very tricky and dangerous as well. Um, you know, just looking through the road book, they were sending, you know, quite a, a little bit of warning. But it's all these efforts you have to make. Um, you know, it's it's like uh, interval training. If you don't push for the um, the best position then you know you find yourself at the back and having to make efforts and if you make these efforts you're saying a race like this you do tend to pay for it in the end well especially since we've had attack and attacks and attacks for the first two hours so it's not been an easy run in in this race so far it's been full on straight from the start now two and a half hours ago well the peloton is completely stretched out and that was quite a uh, nervous little descent and we're on to the next climb we are in Valcourt and the next climb is upon us with um, the Rue de Toffet which is 14% uh, coming up in about uh, 2 kilometers. but from this point in the race if you look at the profile there's hardly any time to recover anymore and just like you said it's going to be an interfall race no, I think it's a one. yeah it's, it's a an area where uh, teams have targeted, uh, and you can see, you know, some of the uh, stronger riders coming towards the fore. Tim Wellens now at the front, Christophe Laporte just in kind of second places. He just wants to be there. He doesn't want to kind of push on. So they, they can uh, recognise this is an area where you can do a lot of damage. Uh, and I mean, if you you push on at the front, there's a lot of riders. You know, because uh, of the small roads are. Uh, you know, there's there's so many gaps at the, the back of the peloton. He can really hurt a lot of uh, riders. There will be a, a bit of regroupment, um, as we can see from our, our screens now. There's a, you know, riders coming back, but it, it, it just it's all in one big one line. And when that happens, it's you know the pressure is is really really on the race. And Tim Wellens looks as if for Lotto Sudal he wants to keep this pressure on and. Um, make the front of this uh, this group, uh, the front of this race, a lot smaller than 161 it set out uh, this morning. Most definitely. Also in that group, Julien Duval as the AGDZ team. As we are in Valcourt. 
where you can just uh, pick your line, basically. Just go wherever you want, there's no barriers. You can go to the cafe, even. It's going to be interesting to see who is going to be at the front of the race if we cross, uh, when we cross the finish line, which is uh, at 34 kilometers uh, from here. And we are on the local laps. This is uh, Duval. has a trouble there finding uh, a lighter gear or so it seems one of the DSM riders at the front with uh, Henry van der Nabele and that is uh, a name you should remember he was uh, fantastic in the Giro under 23 one of the biggest talents uh, at the moment in Belgium and they don't have uh, a shortage of talents for the Grand Tours because this guy is, is, is absolutely one of them of course uh, Everybody talks about Avonapol, and rightly so, but uh, Henry van der Nabele is, um, is one to watch for the future as well. If we look at the um, start list here, we have no less than six riders who are still 18 years young. The oldest, there's only one rider who is um, rather old, and that's Julian Antomarki. He's 36, but you can see that well, most of the riders here are between 18 and 23. It's a very young start list. Oh, good to see. Uh, gives them an opportunity. Gives them a, uh, a chance to match themselves against probably some of the, the best riders that we have. Tim Whelan's being one of them. But, um, you know, he's just uh, set this race alight. And, um, you know, there's riders, you know, absolutely everywhere and only a matter of a few kilometres so the pressure is really on um, just looking at the conditions you know warming up the sun's coming out there is a bit of a wind blowing it's a southwesterly um, but it isn't blowing too hard to, to make um, any real difference but uh, yeah the race is definitely on now and um, it's going to be down to you know what numbers you've got what teammates you've got but um, yeah still a just under 70 kilometers to go and if this is anything to go by the strongest man is going to win in the end yeah this is going to be a very small group actually arriving at the finish because if you have that those local laps uh, usually they take out the race um, stragglers so to say quite fast if the gaps get too big in balance back in action, working towards his uh, newest goals of the season. Just turned 30, uh, Tim Bellens, already. Seems like he's uh, forever young, but uh, 30 years of age, and he's, he's working towards the Tour de France again this year. Has got a little bit of a hate-love relationship with the Tour, um, also because of the pressure that Belgian media tend to push to put on everybody who's got a good result in a stage race, and uh, Valence has had that in, in races like Perry Nice, but he's going to um, prepare for the tour via the Criterium du Dauphiné. Some riders coming back of the uh, SEC racing team. Manabela de la Croix, still of that original break. You see Timo Rosa there. He's a rider of the World Tour team, Brian, but uh, riding with the development team today. Yeah, I, that, that, that's a a kind of new rule. I, I like the fact that um, you can actually use your development team if it's directly associated with your, your World Tour team and you can give them opportunity as long as it's not a World Tour race. Um, I was a little bit unsure about, you know, maybe going down a level. I'm not saying this is a 1.1 race, but, you know, putting a, an experienced rider down uh, in, a, in a team, you know, a, you know, kind of development team, but you know, I can see its merits if you're, um, you know, trying to give the, the youngster some help and you're the kind of road captain on the road. But then again, you could be taking a place away from one of the kind of developing riders and you know, leave the uh, the experience to the sports director in the car. So it's an interesting one. 
I'm not too sure. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to, you know, just going to leave that one out there. But I, I do really think it's, you know, having a development team and, and giving them an opportunity in some of the races to, to ride at a kind of higher level with the, the World Tour team is an excellent ruling. This is uh, Hugo Page of the uh, Continental Development Team of Groupama FDG, 19 years of age from the beautiful city of Chartres, of uh, it's a grand cathedral there in the northwest of um, France. Matisse Plancard, he was second in the race two years ago, but um, he's had a long period of inactivity due to an injury recently came back in the Tour of the Algarve, didn't throw himself into the sprint there today, but the fact that he is there at the front shows that he is making progress in his recovery. Baptiste Blancard, the oldest of the three brothers. His brother, Edward, is riding today with uh, Opsin Phoenix. I can imagine, Brian, that this uh, Hugo Page would have wished that somebody came along with him on the ride. Do you know what I was? I was kind of thinking a, a, bit, a little bit like he's he's putting in a, a big effort, and um, you know sometimes when you, you find yourself at the front of the race, you get excited, and uh, we've all been there, and, and, you, and you make an effort, and you turn around, and nobody's with you, and you're committed, and it's like you don't know what to do, uh, and you and you can continue on your effort. It's it's probably best that he doesn't go. Um, too much into the red, you know, saves a little bit. It's over 66 kilometres to go to the finish, and he's not going to do it on his own. He's looking behind now, and I think he may want to kind of ease up a, a little bit. Um, but it's just general excitement. You know, the race is kicking off. Tim Wellens has um, has been attacking, and you just want to get involved with the action. We're on our way to uh, the next climb for today. Um... Plunkard there with Wellens in this group. Also Ben, ben Healy's, I think the uh, Irish national champion there, racing for Trinity. With the uh, helmet there in the Irish colours, trying to uh, follow this move here. The next climb is going to be... Um, about 8% on the Rue de Frere, with uh, Hugo Page still leading a few seconds for this 19-year-old uh, guy. He hasn't done a lot of racing just yet. He uh, did these two races before in the Bingle Cycling Cup, the uh, Grand Prix Le Samain and the Grand Prix Jempy Montserrat. And uh, in March, 14 March, he raced uh, Paris 3. So that means 14 March, today is 30 May. That's been without competition for two whole months. Because all the French amateur racing, the uh, DN1 racing, has, um, has been struggling as well under the lockdown that was implemented by uh, Macron, President Macron, um, about a week before we were due to race uh, Paris-Roubaix. So that means that most of the amateur racing in France was cancelled as well. And, uh, well, the French clubs and the French World Tour and Pro Tour teams have written an extensive letter to say that even at a lower level, racing should be allowed again because um, it's going to be really, really difficult for the smaller teams to get some races in the legs and actually show themselves. There's about 17 riders in this front group, but you can see another large group of about uh, 30, maybe 40 riders um, coming towards the front. Christophe Laporte there for uh, for Cofidis, he tried to instigate a, a move. It's always um, you know, nice when two groups come together, it's a good opportunity for uh, the counter-attack to go. So, you know, we're starting to see this now that if you've got some legs, then now's the time because the, the two groups when they come together they normally ease uh, while in front this young rider is still ploughing away on his own 15 seconds but I'm sure that he'll want to be joined very quickly He is a time trial specialist Hugo Page won the uh, Chrono des Nations as a junior rider also represented France in Harricot the last junior world championships we had back in uh, 2019 so he's one of the best young riders France has 
at the moment, but of course, like you said, with 65k to go on your own, it's a complete mission impossible. One of well, the riders of Trinity. It's, it's absolutely very active. Very... And maybe that's what the sports director asked of them to be active. Yeah, it's it's you know they were racing towards these climbs and um, you know they've been kind of really strung out and this race it was very active right from the start but it's ignited now and you know we had pretty much everybody in the in the main peloton now it's kind of blown apart. There are um, riders coming back and groups coming back the whole time so the front of the race is swelling. Um, just we've got this one rider off the front and. Now it's it's making sure that um, you know you're uh, kind of ducking and diving a little bit, not committing too much. Um, looks like we've got a rider here at the back just having a bit of a problem from uh, Trinity Racing. Looks as if he's uh, looking for a maybe some neutral service, and and that's going to be very difficult in this race because there's so many groups around. Maybe calling for his team car. His team car is like you say, it's it's virtually impossible to get your team car up here on these small roads and um, you know I think his best hope would be possibly neutral service or, or just he would just have to wait. It looks like he has a slow puncture don't you think? Trying to test that pressure in the tyres but he's frantically calling his sports director who is of course nowhere to be seen um, because the race exploded 10 k ago quite a large group still with uh, some interesting riders there we've seen a very active Christophe Laporte and a very active Tim Bellen so far but many more climbs are coming including two on that local lap and although the finish is a flat one before you actually arrive at the finish you have some um, some climbs to overcome so I don't expect especially after seeing this that we will see a bunch kick at the finish line in uh, Mont sur Marchienne. One of the uh, riders of Trinity racing at the front, also Timo Rosa of the Jumbo Visma team, who had some fantastic news to report today the return of Tom Dumoulin to the Pro Peloton next month in the Tour of Switzerland. Gonna, uh, ride the national championships in the Netherlands both time trial and road and then we'll focus on the Olympic time trial in Tokyo he came second five years ago in uh, Rio behind Fabio Cancellara and he wants to see if he can beat Fabio Ganna in Tokyo which is going to be in my opinion quite a tough ask Page almost caught by uh, one of the chasers, one of the uh, tall riders there of the Bingles Powell Sousa team, also a team from uh, Valonia, from the French speaking part of the country. Oh, we have a crash happening here with uh, Edward Plankart of the opposite Phoenix team, luckily already on his feet. from that FG rider it seems to be in a little bit of pain there and that is Antoine Rochelle well, that's his race over for now teammate actually coming back to check on him That's one rider we can um, put a DNF behind, Antoine Rochelle. Back to the um, race at the front where a lot of things are happening. It looks like he wants to continue. He wants to get his head unit off. It always has that little cable attached to it if you crash that you don't lose it. It's an awful lot of time to uh, get back going. His teammate is still in the lead, Hugo Page. And he 
riders coming across there. Also, it looks like Oliver Nash. Heading back south now to um, Charleroi, one of the biggest cities in Belgium, where we have that local circuit. It looks like everything is coming back together just a little bit. Quite a big group again, Brian, after those initial attacks, but probably silence before the storm i think this is the this is the front group uh, now jose and i think there's um you know that was the the main peloton we're looking at now so we we have got a small group and you know it's all about information when you're racing these a lot of these small roads and you know it's not as if we you know we the tv has access and you know the numbers are, are getting um given out in, in race radio it's it's a lot to keep up with and you know who's chasing behind to put neutral service so that the gap is is gone over 30 seconds so neutral service is in there so this is the peloton the front of the peloton and you know they're, they're looking at each other they, they don't know um do they chase who's there who's not there and one of the riders from uh, SEG uh, has gone off the front so you know there's there's no chase at the moment and I think as soon as that information gets back of, of who's there, who's not there, we may get a, a little bit more of a kind of concerted chase at the front of the peloton. But for the moment, it does look as if there's about, uh, what, 12, 16 riders, all of them nasty, you say, for AG2R and here. So um, this is a good group. Absolutely. With uh, Velens, with Laporte, also there, De Racroix was in that initial breakaway. Henry van der Abele is part of this group for Team DSM and we will have to wait for more confirmation of the riders in this first group, one of the riders of Rival and it's about 12 riders 14 14, quick count there just like you at home, we have absolutely no idea how big the gap actually is. With uh, Matthias Louvel, for Arkea Samsik, with Jelle Valais, back racing there. Number 37 is Tim Wellens. We have Joël Suter, the uh, Swiss rider there, in the fluo of Balloni uh, Paul Sauce. we head towards the next climb and that is going to be in uh, Tina Chateau that climb is about uh, 700 meters long and 5% average and Boli is uh, the rider for Kofidis there together with uh, Valais two representatives for that team so well super there So by Monique and Tim Wellens for Lotte Soudal. Wellens already successful in uh, one of the earliest races of the season in France. And chasing uh, the boys in pink of uh, Celis Roubaix Metropole. We have, uh, for a continental team, quite a good race program with invitations to both the uh, Belgian Cup and the French Cycling Cup, which continues on uh, Sunday with, well, one of the best races on the calendar, Tropo Lyon. 41 seconds is uh, the gap at the moment for our 14 leaders. Here we 
we are at the back of the peloton with uh, Clément Laurent Pichon. Sol Meissen, the uh, German national champion. And this is the front of the peloton chasing down our 14 leaders. With, I think, as biggest name, uh, Tim Bellens and Yellow Valais. The Chateau is in the next climb coming up in uh, two kilometers. Very narrow road again. But first, we have a little cobbled section, Rue des Marronniers. As you can see on the screen, the gap is getting a little bit smaller, although they do have neutral service now, Brian. Yeah, they do, and I, I think just a, there was a moment's hesitation in the, in the peloton as the information got back. and. You know, the uh, Roubaix Leo Metropole team in the pink, as you say, went to the front. Um, they had no representatives in the in the group of uh, 14 in front. And it just took a lot of time. It was kind of really messy um, getting that information, especially with the small roads and riders absolutely everywhere. Uh, looks like, you know, another couple of teams are, are helping out, the, the Canyon team. And, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a possibility that they could come back together, but uh, SEG, I've got a representative already in this uh, front group as well, and uh, that's Dan Holler, if that's how you say it. That's absolutely how you say it, yeah. Strong guy. I think we have uh, most of the names there. Henry van der Abele for DSM. We also have Lucas Eriksson, the former Swedish national Road race champion in the uh, colors of Rival, Oliver Nase, as you deserve. We have uh, Jelle Valais and Tom Boli for Kofidis. The rider for Alpecin Phoenix is uh, Floris de Tier. With number 11, very active today, Theo de la Croix. He was in that first group as well. We have Lou van, Beil, uh, Lou van Belle, a very uh, talented time trialist, the young rider for Limbo Visma development team in the uh, yellow. And the man who initiated this break, and that is uh, Hugo Page. The names, Peter van Spijbroek is the rider of Antermarché, Floris de Kier, Sevan Monique, Bellens, Lou van Belle, Matthias Nouvel, Ludovic Robé, the winner of No Cruz, uh, Tom Boli, Jelle Valais, Oliver Nase, Lucas Eriksson, Hugo Paas, Daan Holen en Henry van den Abele. De names of our first group. En het was the attack of the 19-year-old rider from France, Hugo Paas, initiating this break. And it will be interesting to see who's going to do the chasing. I think companies will not be very happy that they don't have Christophe Laporte in that first group. Yeah, he was um, trying to get involved, but um, maybe one claim too uh, too many for him. Um, but they do have um, you know a couple of strong riders in there, and Tom Bowley and uh, Yelly Wallace. Um, but for the moment, it's, it's still in the balance. It's only 31 seconds, and um, it looks as if you know in the in the front group here. I think the the caption came up with um, you know two riders in, in here from uh, Bingo uh, Pals. I can only see one. I think it's still Sutter. I'm not too sure if um, you know Robit is uh, I, I in this. I haven't seen him now. No, I don't think he's in this. And you know we've got 14 riders here, and we're hitting that kind of small climb now. And you know the gap to only 29 seconds. So. Um, it looks as if there's a few of them starting to, to struggle a little bit, feel the, the pace. Um, Tim Whelan's not kind of pushing on as much. Uh, possibly, you know, maybe kind of waiting. He thinks that possibly this may not be the, um, 
you know, the, the best combination. And, uh, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. So it doesn't look as if there's a, some great cohesion in there. And I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the likes of Tim Wellens and Yelly Wiley's uh, try to do a, a kind of counter move as these, this race uh, comes together again. This is uh, Joel Suter in that right fantastic shot in the red seat fields that bright yellow that we have and with gas prices being up uh, red seed is actually uh, becoming quite a popular biofuel at the moment Nouvelle is the rider at the back for Artea Samsik the gap is not that big and it would be interesting to see who is driving the peloton at the moment well doesn't seem very organized chase it's more like another group attacking with daniel tulip leading here on the cyclocross rider we also have ben healy the irish national champion active at the front Uh, Silly's little bit metropole riders there. And the road surface is typical Belgium. Or at least the French speaking part of the country. Our leader at the moment, Joel Suter, the Swiss rider of the Bingles Powell Sausen team, were always on the attack and had, well, probably their biggest victory in a while winning uh, Noker Kursa with uh, Ludovic Robet. Very tall rider, Joel Suter. As we head towards the uh, cobbles of the Rue des Marronniers. But, um, the chases are close with Lou van Belle. And the 161 riders started, so, well, they're absolutely not in the race anymore, especially not in this peloton. Gaps are still really, really small. Very exciting race so far with uh, 53 kilometers to go. And today out from uh, the finish line for the first time. To finish, but we will see that uh, a little bit later. Riders of the uh, Black Spoke Pro Cycling Academy with Josh Kench here in last position. from uh, New Zealand and the team from New Zealand. Great effort here by Ben Healy. The Trinity the recycling team. So here are six young British riders with uh, Ben Turner, Thomas Bloke, Sam Colferwell, Luke Limperti, Max Walker and Ollie Rees. And Thomas Swift is, uh, well, was the guardian angel of Nairo Quintana in the uh, Tour de France last year. Big, big guy. And they try to uh, get to the front there, but uh, the pace is on as we approach Charleroi again. Back to our first group with uh, Peter van Spijbroek, rider who has had his fair share of bad luck, crashing a lot in his career. Dan Holup, Paul Guy from uh, the Netherlands of the uh, Sef Racing Academy. Suter in the yellow. Lou van Belle, Monique, Eriksson, Van der Nabele, Nase Wellens, Tomboli, Louvel, Floris de Tier, and in last wheel, Jelle Valais. Valais who um, was quite open about his mental struggles over the winter at um, 
felt a little bit stabbed in the back at Lotte Sudal. Heard quite late that there wasn't any room for him anymore. It seemed that he has been part of for well, quite some time. But he says he feels happy again. Racing um, back for him. For Yellow Valais, who also has a bed and breakfast and his own coffee brand. So keeping himself really busy, the uh, 32 year old the bike for a month well of course not off the bike but uh, away from racing it's uh, the entire spring season with um, Portuguese and his best result was a 21st place in Idri Sexual Bank Classic in cycling very active there basically the entire team at the front, facing down Dan Tulit, the older brother of Dan Tulit, who has done so well in the Amsterdam race, and especially Flash Wallon just finishing outside the top 10 in only 19 years of age. Rob Scott there, one of the Kenyan DHB team, and Rory Townsend, the experienced rider. On that squad. So we have our 14 leaders and our two sh chasers with uh, Thomas Swift and Ben Healy at seven seconds and the peloton uh, quite close. Great effort there by the Irish champion and Connor Swift, the former British national champion. About to join this group of 14. And the names again. We have Van Spijbroek, Petit, Monique, Bellens, two riders for Lotte Soudal. We have Nouvelle, Superboli, Valais, Nassen. on Page, Hole, Van der Abele and now joining Swift and Healy. Great effort but um, it remains to be seen whether this effort was in vain. Lost a lot of energy for both Healy and Connor Swift to get to this first group as we hit the next climb. here in Nanine. Missing that first group are the riders of Boot Cycling. So basically all seven of them are now leading the race with um, a mixture of Dutch and Belgian riders with uh, Jordi Bout, Steve Kohler and five Dutch riders with uh, Martijn Budding, Luc Rufter, Slim Burger. Peter Havik and Martin Koistra. Seems like the GPS is going slightly crazy. As we actually still do have a gap for our leaders. As we are in Tina Chateau for that climb and that little cobbled street that we have coming up. Quite a modest chateau, I should say. Not the richest of people building it. But as you can see, the peloton is indeed coming back. Is that climb? It's it's rather short. The 
These are only the categorised climbs. There's many more little digs uphill are not even mentioned in the roadbook. It's one of those places that you need to be at the front and that's what Beat Cycling does really well. It looks like they will be the riders bringing back this, uh, this group as Monique gets to the front one of the young riders of Lotte Chudal who, well, on top of their grand trio or four riders with Caleb Ewan, Degenkorb, Gilbert and Velens have a whole range of extremely young guys from either their own development team. Ooh, that will cost you dearly, uh, Yellow Valais, throwing away garbage just ahead of the uh, feed zone. But um, a lot of young riders from their own development team, and uh, Monique is one of those riders, and reaching across is Grignard the other one because the team is sponsored by the Belgian lottery meaning that they have to try to get as many French speaking Belgian riders as uh, riders from Flanders which is not that easy because there's many many more Fla Flemish riders than there are riders from uh, Wallonie. Van den Abele, Page and Monique are the three leaders at the moment from that group, from that peloton now. Asha seems to have a really good day attacking again. is going to be uh, very, very tiresome, very fatiguing. All these little sprints, all these little intervals, and we've already had such a heart race starting uh, three hours ago, almost three and a half hours ago, with the constant, constant attacks. Brian, this, um, this is turning out quite to be quite an interesting race. Very interesting. Um, you know, I think pretty much from the the word go, it's been an attacking race. Just before we started hitting the, the small climbs one after another, it's there was a bit of a lull in the action. Five riders managed to get about uh, half a minute, but since we've been on air, we, we started hitting the climbs and it's been attack after attack. And you know, we just saw Swift and Healy go across to that move. It's a big effort to make before that climb there, and you're always thinking that um, you know you want to be there. You see the the combination of the the break, um, not really kind of trusting the the other team's going to bring it back, and they made a big effort to go across there. And we keep on saying it in many races, you start to pay for these efforts. So it came to nothing, and now we've got you know three other riders um, going down the road, but. Like you say, you say, uh, Parish is, is having a, an incredible day for uh, Groupama FDG for the moment, and I don't think this is the final roll of the roll of the dice. I think there are many other um, things still to come, but um, definitely it's going to be a, a tough day in the saddle for all of these riders. Emily who was uh, second in the uh, Giro on the 23. Was won by uh, Tom Pickhoff last year. Also second in the uh, Ronde de Lizard, which is also one of those only 23 races that is uh, very important on the calendar. Although, Ryan, it seems like the days where you scout your riders in the Tour de l'Avenir or in the Giro under 23 are, are over. They, they scout them in the juniors already based on power numbers. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's all about, obviously, you know, they're getting younger and younger, and I think when you, when we see the, the likes of uh, Evany Paul coming from junior straight into the, the kind of pro ranks, World Tour team, and what he can do, a lot of the, the World Tour teams are scouting a, a lot younger all the time, and it's a, a little bit easier. Um, back in the day, it was about, you know, going up the ranks, going up the ladder, and uh, even when you got to World Tour level, you had to work for your leader. And nowadays, it's 
with the modern technology, you know the uh, physical makeup uh, of a rider now. You, you know the data. You know what you can do. Um, I know it sounds a little bit robotic, but it's, maybe it is. They, they know that um, you know the power outputs these riders can do for a certain amount of time. So um, yeah, the, the youngsters are getting more of a an opportunity these days, and uh, you know it's nice to see. I had, an, I had a talk yesterday with uh, Johan Musil, and he was, um, he was very unhappy with this development. And he says they don't race with their heart anymore, and if they lose their power meet, it's like losing their Instagram and TikTok. They totally panic. <laughs> He's young. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I know Johan uh, fairly well myself, and, you know, raced with him. He was kind of my era, and you're right, and... You know, any teams that I, I get involved with, any riders I get involved with, you know, it comes a time where you don't need any of that stuff. Just go out and ride your bike sometimes um, because sometimes it's not all about the numbers. Um, sometimes it's about the mentality. You can do the numbers, um, but if your head's not right, uh, you're not going to win. It's as simple as that. So there's a lot of time you have to look after the mental side of uh, cycling and not just uh, concentrate in, in the numbers and I think that's what uh, Johan is trying to say um, there's more to cycling than uh, just doing the, the numbers as they say Sophie Dees are leading the bunch I think that they have a really good shot at actually winning this race with uh, Christophe Laporte but of course he's been um, he hasn't been racing since about a month but in this field he is absolutely one of the better riders especially when it comes to a little bit of climbing and then having a, a sprint after a tough race like today the thought is uh, is my bet for today controlling pace set there by team profibis our three leaders are getting a little bit more leeway with monique the of the three, actually, uh, 23 years of age. Henry van der Nabele is uh, 22, and Hugo Page just 19. Peloton of about 75 riders, I should say. Move back to the front. It's always a struggle for the Belgian Lotus-Sedal team, Brian, to get uh, riders from this region because there's so many more riders in Flanders than there are in uh, Wallonia. Yeah, but some of the ones from uh, Wallonia are good ones. Um, so it's, you know, it's always the same. You know, we've got the Sport Flandering team, which is, you know, just a kind of regional team helping uh, the um, a lot of the local riders and. You know, they're another team. When you talked about development teams, they, they they really aren't a development team. They're a you know a good team of their own right. But you know when the riders get good enough, they, they always move on to to um, you know world tour teams. And you know one of them is uh, Yeli Wallace. I can remember him winning uh, Duardo Vlaanderen um, a few years ago, and you know moved up the ranks. And now he's having to do the chasing at the front of the peloton now. Times are changing. What a great day out on the bike for this uh, young man from Chartres. Hugo Page is his name. One of the uh, best juniors of his generation. And uh, picked up by the development team of uh, Groupama FDG. Henry van der Nabele has already had uh, an extensive race program with uh, Team DSM, with the World Tour team. He's officially set to join the team in 2022. But of course, like we explained, he can race with the uh, pro team, and he did um, in France, the Tour des Alpes Maritimes. He raced uh, Grand Prix Montserrat. He raced uh, the Settimana Copi Bartali, Brabant Sapel, and uh, finished the Tour of the Alps about three weeks ago. So he's had quite an extensive race program already. And he's absolutely one of the riders to watch. Good to have that in the legs, as we say. Um, when we get further down the ranks, they've, they've not had the, the best of racing. And, uh, you know, you think that um, Monique here, uh, as we talked about early on, had, has ridden at a you know, different level of lay, race, you know, where they r ride at, you know, faster speeds. And I'm talking about, uh, you know, World Tour races. So the fact that he's, he's ridden there will, will 
stand in, in good stead for you know the final uh, 43 kilometres here. Um, but like I said just a, a little, few moments ago, this isn't the final roll of the dice. There's um, you know other um, attacks still to come from the, the peloton behind. You could see that from the, the shots that we saw of them that um, you know they've kind of knocked it off a little bit. This gap will go up. Who are, who's going to chase? Uh, you can see Cofferdis at the front uh, with Wallace just on the right hand side. So he was chasing, they've knocked it back a little bit. And um, so let's see what happens. Who's going to come to the front? And I think uh, Lotto Sizdal have put themselves in a, a really good spot here uh, with uh, having one rider in this breakaway of three. They don't have to do anything. Jempi Drucker there in the colours of Cofferdis. One of those riders that I still have to get used to being in a different kit. Uh, Jean Piquet, the Luxembourg rider there, just uh, behind the uh, big rider of Bingles, Paul Sauser. That is going up to a minute. And how do you decide, Brian, whether you can give these three guys, because this is the biggest lead you've had so far in the race. How do you decide that? Well, it's, it's always a... Uh... You know, the sports directors are kind of juggling things at the moment. Um, Cofferdis did ride, they kind of knocked it back a, a little bit. Um, now they're starting to get a little bit organised. What they were they were doing by kind of knocking it back was asking the question, is there anybody else going to, to come up or are you just going to rely on us? And the question is, everybody's relying on them. You know, they are... Uh, you know, one of the, the bigger teams and, you know, they, they have to commit to the, the job that needs to be done. Uh, you can just see lining up behind them in the, the black and the red is the, the World Tour team of uh, Lotto Sudal and having a rider in the breakaway is, uh, you know, is working for them. But there's so many other teams in here are just kind of sitting back and, and relying on the stronger teams to to try and kind of bring this back. Um, so if they can keep it just round about a minute and then we go onto these circuits and we start some, uh, some racing uh, again, uh, some attacks, then, um, you know, the, the race will kick off. But I really do think that uh, Lotto is now in a very good position because now with the Monique in the breakaway, taking nothing against the uh, DSM development rider and the Group Arm, Group Armour development rider, but you'd have to think that um, Lotto Sudal can just follow the moves now and um, you know the uh, the other teams have to do the hard work. Team DSM are here with um, a really young team with four Dutch guys with uh, Tim Ma Naberman, Pepijn Rendering, Enzo Leinse and Kasper van Ude. Pavel Bitter is a rider from the Czech Republic. Hannes Wilks, a German rider. Of course, DSM still being a German team officially. And Henry van der Abele here with number 242. And this is a lovely chateau. It's a little bit bigger than the chateau we just saw. This is for the more richer folk. Although Valunia is uh, the poorer part of Belgium. Um, it's a continuous struggle in Belgium between Flanders and uh, the Walloon region. The Flanders being richer, and uh, the Walloon region used to be a very industrial area. You know that, of course, from Liège and all the mining and stuff that we saw back in the day. And nowadays, um, the Walloon region has a government that is very left-leaning, and the Flanders has a government that's very right-leaning, and yet, on a federal level, they have to work together, which, to this day, has not proven to be a really big success. Belgium is uh, usually champion when it comes to forming a new government after every election cycle. Every four years, it will take them almost two years to form a government, and then they govern for two years, and, and the entire circus starts again. It's a very interesting country with uh, three official languages and uh, nine ministers of health. Nine. For one COVID crisis. It's very efficient, isn't it? Well, if you say so, um, I don't know much about it myself, but uh, yeah, it sounds uh, like a lot of people. It's a lot of people in one Zoom call trying to uh, determine the policy. Well, this group is working very well together. Look at the smooth pedaling style of uh, Von der Nabele. Quite an uh, interesting um, rider, that is. 
you uh, look at the climbing races, the under 23 climbing races, like I said, you were second in the Giro behind uh, Pitcock, that is. The gap was uh, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Pitcock absolutely ruled that Giro last year in September. We all know what happened to him. I don't know if you've seen the uh, mountain bike uh, race this weekend, Brian, with Pitcock. Um, I was a, a little bit busy with the um, the Giro right. d'Italia, but um, <laughs> I believe that uh, he did rather well. It was it was really impressive, starting from the 11th start row and then uh, making his way up to the front of the race with um, after two laps only. It shows what an incredible talent it is. A little bit of communication there from Van der Nabele asking for his uh, sports director. Let's see if the uh, commissaire is already letting the cars through. Roads are pretty wide. Doesn't seem like he has a mechanical problem. Yeah, he indicates that there's a problem with the uh, rear wheel. Yes, difficult because the, the team car can only go in when the, the gap's um, one minute or above. So it's on a neutral service. We're just looking back through my notes from uh, the first stage of the um, Vuelta Catalunya where uh, Monique was, was in the breakaway, um, took the... Um, the King of the Mountains jersey in that stage. He was away with, um, you know, three other riders that day, three strong riders. And when you consider he's riding at that level, he should be, you know, one of the strongest in the breakaways. But, um, you know, I think by the sound of the horn there, we may have the uh, the team car moving up to, to kind of help out now. But luckily, uh, we're on, uh, you know, a road that you could possibly do that. A um, bit wider road. Um, if you had a problem, like we saw the crash with the Group Armour rider earlier, when you got any small roads, very difficult to get any team support at all. But you know, all three riders committing well. Been impressed with the uh, Page already. Uh, we mentioned Monique, uh, Monique the, the rider here, Lotto Sudal, already riding at the uh, World Tour. So um, you know, we're starting to see how hard this drag is up to the uh, the finishing line. So it's it's not an easy. Um, sprint if it does come to a sprint I think o over the years uh, the route has kind of changed a little bit but it, it comes down to a kind of small group uh, sprint in the end but you know as we cross the line um, we'll have uh, three laps to go of 10.8 kilometres Two spectators coming out to watch the race the um, restrictions have eased here up a little bit in Belgium. More people are allowed to gather on the streets. There's a little bit of a cheering sport for Fage, Vomenabela, and Monique. The neutral service part managed to get across. Still leading the Peloton are Kofidis, but now also a little bit of help from Stondebuk, the very big and strong Belgian rider. He's uh, part of that classics team complete overhaul, so to say, of the Azure Desert team from Grand Tour Racing Team to Classics with NASA, Will Van Avermaet, Van Hooker. I think their best shot here is um, Mark Saro, sprinter. Yeah, we're just looking down. From the light. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, we're just looking down there. In this type of finish, Holly uh, Nassen would be um, a good um, you know, finisher. It's a, it's a strong man's finish, and you know he's a he's a strong man. I'm not too sure where he is at the moment after his uh, spring campaign, but Tuesday uh, as well is um, another rider that can finish it off. And I think Cofidis took the onus and and went to the front and. Uh, I'm now having to do, uh, you know, much of the riding, and I think they'll be thankful now that um, AG2R have now come up to to help. So it just means with three riders just sitting here, 54 seconds. Um, I still think that uh, Lotto Sudal are in a in a good way here with a rider in the breakaway. They can just kind of follow any moves that come. But um, 
Yeah, this circuit is not not easy. You can, it kind of drags up to the finishing line, drops away a little bit, and then it starts to kind of drag up a, a, a bit. Um, so it's quite a lumpy finishing um, circuit, if we call it, kind of finishing circuit, 10.8 kilometres. Um, and I'm sure, maybe not this lap, but uh, possibly the next lap, we, we may see some, some action on this climb. It looks like he's stuck in the gearing here uh, on the Nabela. Yeah, it does seem that way. He's um, he's only got two options, the big ring and the little ring. And, um, you know, he's stuck in the, the bottom cog. And, it, and that's always a problem. Um, I hope he can get it sorted out. And, um, you know, the, the sooner the better. Well, he clearly needs a new bike. And that has to come from the team car that can't get past this uh, peloton just yet. The two other riders are going to sprint for the so-called golden kilometre. Um, a little premium there for the one who gets the most points. There's a sprint every few hundred meters. It's a, a thing that we introduced in the Eneco Tour, now Bing Bang Tour, a few years ago. Then it was for bonus seconds in a one-day race like today that doesn't really add any value apart from taking home a premium when you win this uh, golden kilometer. It's, it's added to just add a little bit of spice to the, to the race, but doesn't give you anything apart from some extra money. Oof, that was a close one. Picking up some extra food. It's quite late in the race, Brian. What do you think about that? Yes, you still need it, of course. Um, you know, on the lap, it's, it seems the, the easiest place to, to be, but I just, maybe the, the rider wasn't anticipating to bidons, two bottles in that bag, possibly three, but I think there would be two bottles in that bag and it. it's, it's not until you actually take the musette uh, that uh, you realise that uh, how heavy it is. Finally, the uh, Team DSM car can go across to Van den Abele to give him a new bike. That's clearly what he needs to uh, fix this problem. It's not something that can be uh, fixed otherwise. No, you can't fix it unless you, you stop and um, you know the car coming up and it just goes to show you how long that took He's waiting uh, for the, uh, the team car to come up, and it'll be a, a quick change. Uh, it'll have to be really quick if he, he you know, wants to stay with the, this group uh, in front. But um, Stanley Wolf doing a lot of this chasing, and uh, the gap coming down to 45 seconds now. So, you know, confidence have got a, a little bit of help. Um, still a sizable peloton now, but uh, let's see how quick this one is, Jose. bit of discussion with the mechanic. Oh, pretty clear what the problem is. The new bike is, although, going to try and fix it, maybe. It's always a risk, and um, I know it's a development team, and they should have um, a spare bike on top. Um, but you, you really, the only way he's going to get the, the spare bike is from this car. Um, but he's going to try and try and fix. I just don't like watching these things. He's going oh. to try and oh. flick it. Oh. Yeah, just reset the DI2, and it worked. Yep, it worked. Simple as has that. Their fingers. It's <laughs> simple as don't that. Try this at home. Don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. So a I think there was, reset there. there was one race where um, I think. Another of the team riders was was trying to do um, do it on the move, and um, you know was trying to kind of flick the gear at the at the back. It's the only thing you can do. I think it goes into a crash mode or uh, something like that. And you know he was trying to kind of flick the gear of his his teammate, and I oh, just you know you were kind of cringing and hoping that um, you know he had all his fingers left at the end. I just don't like seeing that when they, they move out. It puts it. The, both in a, a very difficult position, but it was simple in the end, good mechanical skills, and, and it was sorted, so he didn't have to uh, change bike in the end. And everybody's happy. Well, everybody's <laughs> happy for a moment, but I don't think that the rider there would, um, you know, Van der Nabele uh, was happy riding a big gear on that uh, climb. It kind of deadens the legs a little mm -hmm. bit. And it also noticed that now Bingo are helping out at the front so it's not looking good for the uh, three riders in front now we have three teams uh, riding on the front so we get the uh, bingo pals in the fluorescent yellow just behind 
in the brown shorts we get the Eiji Duar and uh, Kofiris with the yellow wallies and the, the red and the white with um, Lotto Trudal just sitting pretty. They've got a man in the in breakaway and they're happy with this situation. Great work there by the Belgian team. And just like uh, Sports Vlaanderen are supported by the uh, federal or regional government, I should say. They don't have the rule that you cannot join the team if you're not from uh, Wallonia. But the uh, Belgian Stuttgart Flanders team, Flemish team, does have. Christophe Laporte. Well, maybe it's time, Brian, to uh, get your guesses in. 27k uh, to go. Who's your man? Uh, for um, today, um Give me one second. I think that um, I'm going to go with one of the, the favourites, actually. And, you know, I'm just looking at Lotto Sedell and the way they're, they're riding at the moment, and I, I think they are in a very good position. And Tim Wellens was one of the favourites coming in here, and but he has to attack, and he has tried to attack and, and break it down, and it hasn't really worked. They've got uh, Gervin Tyson, who's a you know a strong rider for this type of finish, but. Um, I kind of think that you may be going for uh, Christophe Laporte, so I'll, I'll go for... Because um, I'm not... Anokovsky, is, um, I've not seen him in here. I would only think that um, Bingo Powell's would be, uh, be riding for him. And uh, Anokovsky, for me, is, um, I think, you know, one of the fastest finishers that we've got here. Um, and another one is uh, Oliver Nassen. But if... Uh, Bingo Pals has got uh, Anokovsky in here. I think he would be uh, my choice. Of course, he's uh, shown some great form in the Tour of Turkey, but oh, those finishes were mostly flat, though the early stages of those stages uh, include some climbs. Mark Cavendish is uh, quite high up in this ranking um, for the Bingo Cycling Cup, but he is he's training in Greece at the moment. Yeah, he's in Athens, uh, doing a little bit of training. I don't think he stays in one place for um, that long anyway. So I'm doing some uh, some track work on the uh, Olympic velodrome. Yeah, you can just see Anokovsky is there, the uh, Polish champion. He's um, hopefully, if we start kind of moving back now behind uh, Lotto Sudal, um, you'll see the, the white jersey with the, the red on it, Polish champion, just be... Uh, just next day, a couple of the, the Canyon boys in the balloon, the right-hand side. He's just sitting there. He's got a couple of teammates just behind him. So he's got really good finishes. You heard what uh, Jose was saying, that he had some good finishes in the uh, Tour of Turkey. But I just think that this is a, a large peloton, Jose. And uh, I think we, we will see, or we'll have to see some action. I don't think everybody wanting to, to bring this to a sprint final today. And... Um, Tim Wellens has already tried quite a few times and didn't manage to kind of split it. It was just the, the wrong numbers. Um, Oliver Nassen is a strong finisher, and this type of finish he can finish strong, but it's another rider that uh, might want to, to try and do something. Coffee this another hand, you know, with uh, Christopher Laporte, but he also mentioned uh, Jempe Drucker. Jempe Drucker in his day <clears throat> would relish a finish like this as well. It would be great if he can actually show himself there. Um, very amicable man from Luxembourg, very strong rider. 30 seconds, maximum lead of these three riders was about a minute. Last year, we had a breakaway with, um, amongst others, uh, Nicky Terpstra in the final, and then in that final kilometre, Thomas Buda bridged the cross to his uh, teammate, at Tukal Gorekinoshi, and won that sprint ahead of... Um, well, two years ago, of course, I should say. Uh, last year, the race was cancelled. Ahead of uh, Baptiste Plankaert, Terpstra himself, Riesebeek and Turgis, the uh, three riders of uh, Total Direct Energy in that uh, first five. It was uh, quite a dominant race by them two years ago. The race has only been recently upgraded to 1.1 status, which is a uh, third division. The Ringel Cycling Cup is an organisation led by Nick Nouwens, Organised by uh, Colazzo, one of the big organisers in Belgium. And 
basically is nine regional races, a typical Belgian structure of a group of volunteers organizing a race in, um, in their city or their region. Now they have some help with um, communication, with a website and everything. But uh, yeah, these races usually have quite a history. This is also a very old race. And um, I'm happy that we still have these committees organizing races, but the people on these committees are getting older and older and uh, in more trouble getting uh, local sponsors, usually it's local sponsors, local companies, uh, giving a few euros to help get up a race. Well, having Nuggins. the Bingo Cycling Club help is, is good. Yeah, Nick Nuggins isn't um, too old yet. Um, some a few years ago he retired from the Pro Peloton, but I think we've seen the success of the, the Flanders Classics because they were individually owned as well. Uh, they've come together as a series. And I think, uh, you know, they're looking at a very similar thing with uh, with these races. Um, I always think when you look in a series of races, there should be a, a, a gravel series. And, you know, we see, you know, these kind of gravel races, uh, events pop up, you know, all over the place uh, throughout the world. and. You know, I'd love to see a, a, a kind of whole series of, of these events. Um, there's, there's many of them, and I believe that you're covering uh, one of them um, next week. What the races do you mean? The kind of gravel, dirt track races, oh, gravel uh, races. Yeah. Oh, on, on Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday, um, is, yes. Yeah, it's a, a big competition from the Giro um, happening at the moment, and many races across Europe. Which uh, well, you can basically all watch here on GCN Plus. All the races that are happening today uh, will be on GCN Plus to watch back. And uh, when it comes to Mallorca, first race there was today. We have highlights as well, so you can watch everything you want. With number 81, Lena Teufels in the uh, black and yellow of Carteletto Isorex, uh, one of the most active riders in the Tour of Rwanda last week. He was in the breakaway five of eight days and uh, brought home both the King of the Mountains jersey and the Intermediate Spin classification. And especially, well, the Mountain jersey in a race like Rwanda is uh, a big thing. It's, it's quite a mountainous country, beautiful, beautiful green country that, well, we might go to in uh, 2025 for the World Championships. There's, um, there's two candidates in Africa, Morocco, Tangiers, or... Kigali in Rwanda. And uh, David Lapartien, the uh, president of the UCI, was in Rwanda, so that says a lot. The decision will be made in uh, Belgium at the World Championships uh, this September. Two more laps to go with uh, Monique, Lepage, and Van den Abele standing a gap of 40 seconds in this uh, Circuit de Wallonie. Many riders, as you can see, have already abandoned going to the team buses. And also still a rather large peloton. And still everything to play for. I think um, the teams, and especially as you deserve, have realised that they can close the gap rather easily and will give those three leaders a little bit more room now. The thing is, if they, if they close it down too early, then you know the attacks will come. So it does look as if the, the teams riding in the front are, are happy to ride for a, for a sprint final. Uh, we've already mentioned the teams are riding on the front of uh, Bingo Pals. They've got Anolkowski, the, uh, the Polish champion, very fast finisher. We've also um, got uh, Kofidis. They've got Christophe uh, Laporte. Um, so, you know, they'll be 
happy for it to possibly come to a, a sprint final. And um, you know, this is this is where it counts. It's you know, we've already mentioned um, AG2R as well with um, you know their possibilities at, in a sprint final. So. Uh, you've already mentioned Saro and um, you know Ollie Nason uh, for this uh, type of final. So you know that's the reason why you don't want to kind of bring them back because then others will start to go on the attack. So just look as if there's a few teams riding in front of the peloton, happy enough to, to see this go down to a potential uh, sprint final. Our three leaders with in the black for Team DSM, Henry van der Nabele. In the uh, colours of the French flag, it's Henri Page, who's been very active today. Initiated the break of 16 riders on his own and then um, attacked again. And the third rider is Sylvain Monique, a rider from the region for Lotto Sudal, but he seems to be struggling just a little bit now. I think it's just his style, if I can remember. He's um, he's kind of sitting on the back. Um, some riders, you can, you know, are, are so kind of poker faced, and um, you know, it's just sitting on the on the saddle, nice and smoothly. He is kind of rocking a little bit, but in the last time up there, Van der Nubele had uh, some trouble, um, and it does look as if he, you know, Monique is in trouble. And this may change the dynamics of the of the race, you see. Um, if he doesn't manage to stay here, then I think uh, Lotto Sudan might be forced into some uh, offensive racing now. He's touching his legs, so maybe he's having uh, some cramps there. It's not a particularly hot day, it's about 18 degrees, but because it's been so hectic and it's been rather difficult getting well, bottles from the team car because they haven't been able to come across, well, maybe he's having some, uh, some cramps there. Lot Sudal, they will of course know that Monique drops from this breakaway with now Van der Nabela and Page left. And they will go for plan B or C or D because they have options there. With Steph Kras, with Grignard, Thijssen, Vermeers, Matthew Holmes and Tim Bellens. I'm impressed by the strength of uh, the young Frenchman. Really showing himself. Both of them look good when you consider the um, the lap previous. The uh, rider from uh, DSM Van der Nubele had some uh, some troubles, um, and he looks strong enough now. So both of them uh, look equal to each other. And you know, just as we say this, you know, we look back at the the front of the peloton, and it's all change. Attack by uh, Lou van Bella of the Jumbo Visma team. So Dan Tulip there for Kenyon DHB. Active race for him. Bella, a time trial expert. Also represented the Netherlands at the World Championships and the European Championships as well. If we look at the um, fast riders, Tim van Dijkert of twins has um, won a race already this year that was um, last week if I remember it well in uh, in Serbia but honestly I don't know which part they are going to play if it comes to a sprint Canyon DHB very active at the front with uh, Robert and Jacob Scott not related though uh, Matthew Bostock Rory Torrenson Dan Tulip Damien Clayton and cyclocross cross rider uh, Thomas Main. Philip himself also a former cyclocross rider and on the podium in the junior ranks but, uh, has said cyclocross goodbye and focuses on the road now after a year of injuries finally back on track with uh, Kenyon DHB Sun God. One of the lifelines at the moment in uh, British Continental Racing. There's not a lot of teams left, is there? No, uh, it's, um, you know, and races as well. It's It hasn't, uh, you know, looked good, good 
especially over lockdown as well. Um, but, you know, good to see that the uh, Canyon DHB team here, um, you know, they've been using training camps, and which is, you know, good. Um, OK, they, they haven't been, uh, you know, kind of altitude training camps like they, they have at World Tour, but they can get a lot of work done. And now we're starting to see them towards the front, so they must be doing something right uh, in training because, uh, you know, they're getting involved with the racing inside the, the last 20 kilometres. That's the uh, the riders in the, the uh, kind of dark blue, black shorts at the front. And they have to, if they don't get a lot of opportunities, of course, to uh, to race. They will um, be staying here and um, race some more in Europe. But uh, the next race scheduled is a stage race in France at the end of the month. Um, and, of course, they already have their invitation for a Tour of Britain, which is going to be the biggest gig for them of the year. Talking about British uh, teams, British rider just came to the front there for um, Lotto Sudal, Matt Holmes. Again, a rider coming back from injury. And now we're seeing uh, Arkea Samsic starting to, to ride. So does that mean that um, you know they have uh, Capio and or McClay still in the, the front of this uh, group here? So hopefully we'll be able to pick them out. Um, but yeah, the gap coming down 20 seconds, 16 kilometres to go. Lotto now forced into doing a, a little bit of work now, purely because uh, Monique has been dropped from the, the leader of this race. And then Van der Abele is doing uh, a lot of work in this first group. Has had um, a full race season so far and when it comes to his mates here in the breakaway. He's, already, he's only got three race days so far this season, but um, it's been rather impressive in this race. Still defending a very small lead, Hugo Page and Henry van der Abele. The peloton will return. the first climb of the local lap and then we've got that little dig up in the uh, penultimate kilometer how long would you wait brian to uh, to attack when would be the perfect place if you want to avoid a bunch sprint? well i think um you know on that on that climb the last time it looks like um because we'll be soon on to the drag up towards the finish i don't think that the drag up towards the finish although come the end it'll, uh, it'll be significant but I think it's once we go through the finish and, and start on this climb in the final lap. Um, I'm just su surprised when I we saw the racing earlier on today, I just thought this race would be in pieces, but it just goes to show you that it just wasn't the right combination. And, you know, there was enough teams came to the, the front of the peloton to close these things down. By the looks of things, there's a few teams still interested in, in riding towards a, a sprint final. We already mentioned that... Um, one of the favourites for today's race is Tim Wellens. He can't afford to wait for a sprint final. Um, so I think it, it will kick off in the, in the last lap and what sprinters are going to come to this final. And we've already seen the final twice already. It's, it's not easy at all. It's definitely not. These two riders are not giving uh, up so easily. The finish line is uh, coming up in less than four kilometres. Holmes, who um, oh, really crashed already today. Yeah, he's got a flat back wheel, uh, not the perfect timing for, for Matt Holmes, and uh, you can see it difficult uh, coming through the corners there. Yeah, you can see that look up the feet. He's not going to be uh, going back to the front of the race now. She was on for the mechanic. And this is not. A, this yes. is not a great change. This. No, not at all. Uh, that wasn't uh, the best change, and that's always the problem. When we had the, the discs coming in, the disc brakes. You know, a lot of um, teams were choosing to kind of change bikes more than uh, change the, the wheels. But I'm sure Matt will try and get back. Hopefully, there will be a big enough convoy of cars that he can get back. But 
how much use will he be when he does get back um, and when he gets back, but I think he'll try. He has to, but the race is not slowing down now with uh, the shape of his peloton. The race is absolutely on and uh, riders are struggling to stay with this first group now led by uh, Bingo's Paul Sauser who uh, in Boris Falet also have an interesting rider for today. Next to Anjelkowski, of course, the uh, Polish national champion, but therefore not in the fluo. Big group there. As you can see, all grouped together. Nice van Hoeker, the last in line there, former medicine world champion. Still going strong, Van der Nabele and Hugo Page. The peloton is getting closer as we approach the finish line. Going towards that final K now. I think his sports director will be happy with the performance of uh, Hugo Page today. That's what yeah, his uh, teams are well. here for. Yeah, written very well, uh, both of them. Um, you know, looking round, see the peloton coming up there, up this uh, drag. It's a hard, hard finish up here. And, um, you know, this uh, group is thinning down a, a little bit, um, but hopefully we'll be able to pick out the, the sprinters that are here. I also noticed that uh, Tim Wellens is sitting third wheel, so I think possibly when we come through the finish up in that, that climb, he may want to, to have a dig and, you know, look at his option of uh, trying to win this race. But uh, it does look as if it's... Going on to the last lap here, we're going to have uh, a complete peloton and I'm sure that we'll see some some attacks. Nice fist bump between the two of them. Two young lads here, Van der Nabele for DSM and uh, Paj for Group Am have ridden really well. Yeah, we know that we are going to see Van der Nabele in the World Tour peloton or in the World Tour team next year. And uh, Paj, oh, he might be one of those riders... Um, joining the team, but he's still only 19, so he's got time. Final kilometre of this local lap. One more lap to go. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen in that final lap. Are there going to be attacks, or are the teams uh, with the strong sprinters trying to get everything together? A name also interesting in that... Uh, Arkea Samsi kid is Bram Welter. He's a heavy, heavy guy, big guy, but he has a strong sprint after a hard race as well. So they have some um, some carts to play in Arkea Samsi. Lost uh, Nasser Bouani, who's suspended until um, the 8th of June due to that manoeuvre in the uh, race in Cholet, Pays de la Loire, deviating from his line and uh, throwing Jake Stewart into the barriers. Luckily for Stewart, that the barriers were sturdy. He did break his hand, though, but um, it could have ended pretty badly for Jake Stewart for that move by Bouani. He's also getting a course in re-education by Nassar Bouani and safety. Yeah, I think there's a, a few riders that need that course as well. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's, there's always controversy. We had it yesterday in the, the Giro d'Italia stage. Um, not with, you know, riders, but, uh, you know, more with the um, the running towards the finish. But, you know, as expected, we're starting to see the attacks. Um, this is a SEG Racing Academy uh, starting to go on the attack now. And... But there's still a strong pace at the front of the, the peloton with the uh, duo for uh, AG2R. So I think we'll see this the, the whole way in towards the finish. But it's always going to be very difficult to stay away from some of these uh, stronger teams. The base needing that bunch there with his typical head bobbing style. over his shoulder as the peloton is approaching fast now onto this rider of the uh, Dutch development team SG Racing Academy all young guys 
hoping to uh, get a contract at pro or world tour level. With the former mind here, Wadi Pessier, all close now, of course. Counter attack happening from Grupama Evigi. Very active race so far. Great pain face here by him. You can see this is the climb at the beginning of the lap. It's a tough one. Much tougher than the second one, the second climb on the local lap. It's Lotte Chadal bringing back the move. Stondervulf has done his job at the front of the bunch. And now let's go. Great final coming up. Final nine kilometers of this race. Looks like Gerbert Thijssen. Van Bilsen. Look at that, so difficult to get back to the front now. Well, they're pretty much over the top of the uh, the main part of the climb now. Uh, we saw a couple of tentative moves, uh, still a large peloton, and you know they're just riding a hard tempo um, to try and kind of keep this together. It's, it's you know, if they wanted to kind of force attacks, it, it, they would ease off. But it does look as if Lotto Sudal just keeping the pressure on, not to kind of split the peloton up, but. More a case of um, just making sure that uh, nobody goes on the on the attack and, and puts them on the, uh, the offensive. But the uh, moments with eight kilometres ago, uh, there's a few teams here you know, really interested in bringing this down to the you kind of final kilometre sprint. A little bit of communication there. It's the uh, team car of Kofidis and Bielsa there. should be in this group. Very active race so far for the team. Morosa coming back there to the front for Jumbo Visma. So uh, Pete cycling there. I don't see the Polish champion at the moment, do you? Um, no, it's kind of very difficult with the uh, the pictures we're seeing. I would be surprised if he wasn't there. Um, so we'll we'll just have to to wait. And I, I think we saw Rubit was uh, riding on the front, um, and Bingo are there. And you see the Polish champion third place there. So there they're um, you know very happy with the the way things are at the moment. But um, I still think that, that we might see some attacks and the drag up towards the finish. Um, but it does look as if there's a few teams here. Quite happy to take this down to a sprint. Vault, the rider for Ajubezer. We also see Baptiste Plankard coming to the front for Antarmaché Wanti. One of the riders from Dukla Banska. A team from uh, Slovakia. Keeping the pace up, that's the plan now with 7k to go to avoid attacks happening. But this is still a rather big group. The race is panning out completely different than two years ago when uh, we had a breakaway of three in the final. Flankaert, Terpstra and Riesebeek. And Buda coming across and winning that sprint. But it looks today like it's going to be a bunch kick. Yeah, not unless somebody has the legs to go and the drag um, going up to the, the kilometre to go. Um, you know, a, a kind of really late attack, but um, you have to have good legs to be able to do that. Yeah, if you still can attack this peloton at this pace, you uh, sure have something left. It's been a long race, 194 kilometres. 
with a fast and furious start. No breakaways, just a very high pace straight from the start. Uh, we've had some small attacks, one group with a maximum of a minute on the peloton, but uh, it's been far from an easy ride for these uh, 24 teams here. Great positioning there by Bingol Powell Sousa, the Polish champion. Still, also looking down there, just uh, a little bit further back in the left-hand side. She, you do have um, Alpes and Phoenix, and you know they've got some uh, some interesting riders as well. Uh, they can finish this one off. They've got the uh, the German champion, um, good sprinter. So there's uh, a number of them. I think there's about four, possibly five of them, uh, just kind of sitting in there, staying on the wheels, not committing at the moment. Are they going to play the card of Gerbe Thijssen at Lotte Soudal? Maybe an attack by Tim Wellens. They also have uh, Florian Vermeers, who is a strong rider, of course. 5k to go. to go and the pace is up now with uh, Blancard to the front with the yellow helmet so Milkowski, the Polish champion saw this uh, big train of uh, Arkea Samsi at the right side of the peloton all the way at the back here, Flores de Tiet, part of one of the earlier moves more climber type of Alperson Phoenix to gallop to the finish line. One more climb to go. And then we know who's going to be the successor of Tomabuda two years ago here on the roads in Wallonie. Not to be confused with the Grand Prix de Wallonie. That is in September and that finishes on the Citadel. Great work there by Akia Samsi. Also looking for Laporte. I don't think Laporte really needs a lead out. But at the moment, two leading teams with uh, Achia Samsik and Lotte Soudal. And also Higgins Berman there in that light blue with those light blue helmets coming to the front and beat cycling. Yeah, just moving down in the right hand side there, you can see uh, 82R Citroën. And um, it's a good pace about this one, uh, coming on to this kind of final drag up towards the climb. I'm surprised there's so many riders uh, left at the front of this race because when we first came on, it was just attack after attack, really exciting racing, but it never broke up enough. This uh, final circuit here, which they've done three times, hasn't really. You know, kind of detonated the peloton, so it looks like we are going to see a, a sprint finish for this one. And a rather, rather big group with uh, the entire team of Arkea Samsi. Very impressive work by Lotte Soudal as well. Dylan's there in second position. And who's going to be their dedicated sprinter? A little bit of a gap there in the bunch, still a group of about 30, 35 riders heading towards that final kilometer with uh, Meissen struggling to get to the front there with his teammates. It looks like Meissen is going to be the dedicated sprinter for Alperson Phoenix, trying to find his place there in that sprint train. Vol leading that uh, group now for Aju to be uh, over and out now for Duval, next rider coming up. The clock there in the uh, white and red for Profidis. And now it's a sprint to get to the front on that final climb until it kind of flattens out with 500 meters to go. Great work by uh, Arkea Samsik and Ajidezer controlling 
this peloton, making sure that nobody gets away. Yeah, this pace is too high now. Um, I don't think we'll see any any movement now. Anybody trying to go um, inside the, the kind of last kilometre? It's uh, Connor Swift, the former British champion at the front. A lot of pushing and shoving and moving up now. So, yeah, we're going to see a sprint final for this one. So with uh, Timo Rosa, seems like the um, Dingle Powell Sauter boys are a little bit more to the back now. Everything in the hands of Achia Samsik. Looking very solid, the French team going into that final kilometre. There it is, final kilometre of this Circuit de Vallonie. We have a sprint coming up, or a very late attack, but uh, most likely we're going to see a sprint with uh, Aji Desert coming to the front now. There's uh, still four riders, impressive work there. With Marc Saro in fourth wheel, their sprinter still has three men in front of him. Marc Saro, the sprinter for Aji Desert, two guys left for him. And it looks very good for Marc Saro, but also for Laporte. Laporte is up to the front now. Serbe Thijssen seems to be the guy for Lotte Soudal. Final man in front of Marc Saro. Laporte biding his time there, waiting, waiting. Also sprinting Florian Vermeers and an attack there by uh, Timo Rosa. Ooh, he has to go and sit back down. Timo Rosa, Stan van Tricht tries for Seg Racing, but it's going to be Saro versus Laporte. And a, well, rather easy win for Christophe Laporte. Big favourite today wins the race here in Charleroi, in mont sur marchen one of the suburbs. That looked rather easy. I think it's just about timing there, um, you know, because you can see the finish. You know, this was the, the peloton. Look at the, the, you know, look at where they're spread out over the last couple of kilometres. Now that that was a fast, hard run up towards the finishing line there, and a strong sprint from uh, Laporte. There's always questions about you know how these riders come back after a, a bit of a break, but that was quite easy in the end. Nice to see up there as well, Matt Bostic for the Canyon DHB team, uh, and of course. I think was there, but it was just the pace of the um, AG2 Arcitron when, when they went up there, they, they really kind of stretched things out. But the port a few weeks ago was on really good form, he still got some good form even after a little bit of a break. Yeah, he's one of the guys for races like this heart races and a heart final. And he's always got that kick then in the final. Great win by uh, Christophe Laporte. For Team Cofidis here in Circuit de Vallonie. Yeah, it was a good lead out here, you could see, with um, Saro just sitting in, uh, in second place there. And you know, Vermeer was there, uh, but Laporte just follows the wheel with you know, great lead out and uh, just opens up uh, with about you know, 100 meters ago or a little bit less. And um, you know, a great win there. Um, Pythia, Lawrence Pythia was up there as well for uh, Group Armour, which is a great result considering how they've raced. Um, but you know, it was just a you know power sprint to the end. And um, you know, just watching Laporte, he's just biding his time, just sitting here. That's about experience, nowhere to go, just waits for the, the gap to open, he just goes through, follows the row, and then just opens up 100 metres to go. And he just had the, the strength and the kick to, to deliver a, a really nice win there. Win by Laporte, second place for Saro, and third place also goes to uh, a French team, although not a French rider, Lawrence Pithier. I think Pithier might have been uh, picked there with Anakovsky in the, the right hand side there, so third place may have gone. It's a close one, uh, we'll wait and see. Um, but Uno X also up there, it looks like uh, that was firstly Warskold um, up there, but uh, it was just a hard, hard final there. And you can see with the, the peloton just disin disintegrated. Second win of the year for Laporte, already won um, the stage in Etoile de Sergio. Also an uphill sprint that was against uh, Nasser Bouani in Delgarde. Um, been close a few times with uh, second places in Paris-Nice. 
en dwars door Vlaanderen. And now back with a win. And uh, we're going to see him again on Sunday in Trobro Lyon. The results. Laporte ahead of Saro, Pithier, Agnolkowski, Werenskjold. Winning from Tricht Vermeers, Dan McClay and Matt Bostock in the top ten of today's Circuit de Wallonie. Quite an international uh, top ten. Yeah, um, good top ten there. Yeah. Nice. I said Matt Bostick in there, Dan McClay just down there. But... Um, uh, just a, a good mix there of um, some Belgian riders, some experienced riders, and um, a good one there for, for Cortes. Well, I actually did in the end from Laporte. I thought that um, AG2R got that right. It's just that uh, just wasn't as strong as this man here. Well, and that concludes our coverage here. Many races to watch back today, or still watch the final of uh, the Classica Navarra women's racing in, uh, well, you wouldn't be surprised, rainy country, because it's wet again. So you can watch that one, or um, well, tune in tomorrow, or watch the Giro, because... Um, it's been quite a day there in Italy. I won't give away any spoilers, but um, you better watch that back. I will tonight. Wallonia. Well, Seems to kind of kick off right in the middle of the, the race. Never split up and. When I looked at the route there, I was very much doubting it was going to come down to a, a bunch finish, and it, it did in the end. Yeah, rather surprisingly. Nice uh, third place there for Lawrence Pithy. I think we have to say it like this. He's only 18 years young. Going to be 19 in July from New Zealand. First year pro, or first year elite rider, I should say. And, um, well, great result for him. One of the youngest riders in the race. Great result. Like we, we said right from the start, an, an opportunity to to get up there, take some scalps, because there was some strong riders in, in this field today from a lot of World Tour teams and, you know, second division teams. So for um, for these riders, it was all about, you know, learning curve, where are you at? And uh, he placed himself well. Um, OK, he was kind of hanging on a little bit towards the, the, the final there. Anakovsky was coming quickly, but, yeah, it was a, a good little race, this one. Little summary of today, Circuit de Vallonie, the third race of the uh, Bingo Cycling Cup, 194 kilometres to go. Very active opening hours of the race. Then we had a first breakaway with uh, Théo Delacroix, amongst others, coming back with uh, a larger group. As uh, the hilly zone is starting, a group of about 14 riders, attacked there by Hugo Page. One of the young riders of Groupama FDG. He was uh, the one igniting the final. Very active, very good race by this young man from Chatre. Joel Suter there for the Bingle Powell Sausen team. And then we end up with a breakaway of three with uh, Page, with Sylvain Monique, and with Henry van den Abele. They're the group with the biggest gap in today's racing. A minute as we head towards the local laps around Mont-sur-Marchen, which is a suburb of Charleroi. Trouble there for Monique, who couldn't follow the pace on that climb, that climb in the local lap. And then also Page and Van de Nabele get caught by a still rather large peloton. And the final of today's stage, great lead out by uh, Agi Dezer. They still had four riders in front of Marc Sarro going into that final one and a half kilometers. Last rider ahead of Sarro. 
lets him go, and then we have a sprint of two French riders, Saro in the white and brown, and Christophe Laporte in the white and red, and it's a rather easy win for Christophe Laporte. The second win of the year for the 28-year-old Frenchman, beating Saro and young Lawrence Pithier, a uh, rider from New Zealand, only 18 years young. That concludes the uh, Circuit de Vallonie and an interview here with uh, the race winner. Oui, Samuel, félicitations à Christophe. Euh, Christophe, racontez-nous un petit peu votre sprint d'abord et le gros travail de l'équipe. Tell us a little bit more about our sprint. Fait un super travail toute la journée. On était toujours. Oh, the team has done fantastically well. Fait la course euh, comme on voulait le faire. Yeah, pour we made the race. Avoir à tout contrôler. Il y a un petit groupe. We had everything under control. Ça nous allait bien. Trois mecs devant. For us, three riders in the break in the final was good. Après, on a bien placé au dernier virage. Après, j'ai suivi les H2R qui ont lancé le sprint. J'étais idéalement placé dans la route. Et voilà, il a lancé. Je suis passé dans les 100 derniers mètres. Voilà, j'ai pris un bon point. C'est une belle règle pour le race. travail de l'équipe aujourd'hui. Ils ont été super. Qu'est-ce que vous avez attaqué à 100 km de l'arrivée On a vu une attaque de départ. Vous avez attaqué à 100 km de la ligne. Il y avait une petite bosse, j'ai fait un peu l'effort. Je ne comptais pas partir spécialement tout seul. J'ai essayé un peu sur une de ces petites climbs. Je n'ai pas pensé à 100 km. Si il y a un groupe qui revient, je voyais que ça se passait un peu les boucles d'attaque. Je voulais suivre, mais je ne voulais pas me retrouver tout seul comme ça, ce n'était pas volontaire. Bon, vous aviez une pancarte, un grand favori, si ça arrivait au sprint, vous avez assumé en fait votre rôle Oui, oui, j'étais l'un des favoris si ça arrivait au sprint, et même si ça faisait la course, je me sentais bien, j'ai failli chuter dans un virage, j'ai un peu tapé le genou, du coup j'étais un peu... Un peu déconcentré pendant une petite période avant d'arriver sur le circuit. Et après, dans le final, j'ai été blessé et l'équipe faisait un gros travail. Mais je n'ai pas pensé trop à ça. Je vais faire le maximum pour eux aussi. Une dernière chose, c'est quoi votre sentiment ici Je fais tout pour réussir aujourd'hui. Je suis content. Je suis content, c'est toujours un plaisir de reprendre avec une victoire. J'ai gagné une course de cette saison, je suis content pour l'entrée, donc je gagne aujourd'hui et c'est une très bonne chose pour l'équipe, pour moi je suis content. Surtout pour la confiance pour la suite de la saison Oui, pour la confiance, pour tout, c'est toujours du plaisir de gagner. Merci beaucoup Christophe, félicitations. C'est toujours bien de gagner une course, dit Laporte. Il a trouvé qu'il était au front de la course avec 100 km à aller, mais ce n'était pas vraiment un choix, c'était une chose accidentelle. Je suis content pour lui, c'est toujours un plaisir de gagner une course, c'est toujours un plaisir de gagner une course, c'est toujours un plaisir de gagner. International top 10 with France, New Zealand, Poland, Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium and the UK in this um, exciting race with lots of attacks and, well, one of the big favourites winning in the end, as he said himself. And uh, a great race by the team, Kofidis. We know that Tim Elias stays the leader in the uh, Bingo Cycling Cup with Laporte uh, not having part of uh, not having part of uh, two of the earlier races we had this year. We didn't have any points just yet. There's Nick Narens. Nowadays he's a supermarket manager, supermarket manager, and the boss of the Bingo Cycling Cup. Twice winner of the Tour of Flanders. Thank you. 
laid out man for Ajudezet was uh, Damien Touze, last man, and Laporte said in the interview, I just kept the wheel of Savo. Timo Rosa trying to sprint and has to go sit back down on the saddle, shaking his head. Meiser trying to come across all the way on the outside, but uh, a little too late. Loving how the um, Azure Desert team and Von Hooker is already communicating, watching the sprint from that fourth, fifth row in the peloton. And away for the podium. Another interview with uh, Mark Saro, who came in second today. Marc, est-ce que vous étiez confiant ou euh, vous avez ressenti en fait que, que Christophe revenait sur vous dans les 50 derniers mètres Did you have confidence or did you really feel la porte coming Je suis confiant, j'étais super bien dans mes J'ai fait mon effort à, à 100%, mais oui, j'ai senti que I, I did 100%. Le revenait et j'ai vu vraiment But, uh, uh, one rider came back in the final meters. Voilà, j'ai j'ai rien à dire, j'ai on a fait un, un super boulot d'équipe. I don't have anything to say. The, the voilà, team did fantastic. Brought me to the finish line. C'est vrai qu'on a vu un gros um, and I'm happy with this podium. À l'interview Christophe Laporte qui a dit moi j'ai directement pris la roue de Marc. Oui, bah depuis le Laporte uh, said in the interview that he immediately took la, your la wheel. La condition euh, va crescendo, mais euh, c'est vrai que le my, uh, my form is growing donc, euh, after that crash uh, last year in Poland. Aujourd'hui, on a un podium, mais surtout on a, on a vu un fort collectif. On a, on a vraiment mis un. un we have place. a strong collective as a team. Il y a beaucoup de positifs dans cette journée, qui était pas une journée simple. And we have a lot of positive things si to take away from this race. Même si pour dire que c'était c'était pas la, la course la plus relevée de de l'année, mais ça ça a roulé très fort toute la journée. Et... Voilà, bon, it's not the highest ranked race of the year, but they were racing it fast. 
On s'attendait un peu avec, euh, avec une start list comme ça, avec euh, beaucoup de continentales, à, à une course débridée et c'est ce qui s'est passé. La course a, a peiné à se décanter, il y a eu une échappée très tard. Euh, après on savait qu'il y avait un passage difficile, on a emballé, mais on a toujours été bien représenté. On a, voilà, But, on a um, des, I always felt um, um, myself well at the front, well surrounded. And uh, we uh, focused on the sprint, but also had other parts to play. But we found there were too many people left in the peloton and that we had to, uh, to go for that sprint. Little overhead view here with the final lead out of uh, Damien Toussé, ahead of uh, Saro Vermeers. Laporte, Rosa in the yellow has to go sit down again. Oof, almost a little touch wheels there between Rosa and Matt Bostock. Great sprint there by the 18-year-old rider from New Zealand, staying onto that wheel of Laporte. And, uh, well, getting his first podium in an elite race. He will probably remember this day. And uh, Saro said, yeah, I felt really good, but uh, we encountered one rider who was stronger, and that was uh, Laporte. It's a pretty interesting mascot. Well, luckily, we have here on the podium. Il termine euh, en 2015 troisième du Grand Prix de Wallonie, euh, vainqueur d'étape sur euh, Bessège, également deuxième à travers les Flandres, onzième du Tour des Flandres. Je vous demandez d'applaudir le vainqueur 2021 pour Christophe Laporte pour la formation Campus. Second win of the year for Laporte. The first one came really early in February, the opening stage of Etoile de Bessège and a teddy bear as well. Well, how cute is that? Lots of spoils on the podium here in Belgium. We have teddy bears, we have a cup, we have flowers, and we have beer. What more do you want? Next race of the uh, Bingle Cycling Cup is going to be next month and that is going to be quite an interesting one on the 5th of June Dwarf Stuart Hageland a gravel race very exciting um, dusty affair and um, I think uh, it was even won by uh, Laporte in the past so maybe we'll see him again there But first, we're going to see Laporte back again next Sunday in the Trop Lyon, and that is for sure a race that he's won before. So he will be happy to show himself again in France. Well, thanks for watching the Circuit de Wallonie, the third race of the Bingle Cycling Cup. First two races won by Tim Mellier. He's got other things on his mind at the moment, and um, the third race today won by Laporte. On behalf of Brian Smith, thank you very much for watching, and... Uh, See you again soon. Voilà, merci, merci. Nous allons passer au héros du jour, hein, euh, héros of the day, euh, Etias. Voilà, donc, euh, j'attends votre petit coup de Etias.
Et voilà, il montra ce, ce premier match du podium, on va appeler Henri Dantonabel. Voilà donc qui avait terminé deuxième du milieu du tiro. On l'a vu dans l'échappée aujourd'hui, hein, donc il n'a pas tenté grand chose pour peut-être finir en stream. Voilà Henri Dantonabel qui prend euh, le leadership de ce challenge. Voilà, bravo pour le Henri Dantonabel de cette formation euh, DCM Development. Voilà, en tout cas, un peu d'applaudissements parce qu'il a été le héros du jour, on peut le dire, et qui euh, garde son. Bien entendu, c'est tout le héros du jour. Voilà, donc pour Henri Van de la Belle. Merci à notre euh, Miss Eckart également. Hein, donc, euh, bien sûr. Voilà. Allez, on vous remercie tout le monde. Euh, J'espère pour la deuxième édition de 2022. Et après, on sera voir de monde ici sur le podium de l'arrivée et également sur la ligne d'arrivée. Mais voilà, donc. Euh, Lawrence, third place. This is incredible for a development team. What is your feeling today? Oh, I came into the race on some good form. I had a bit of bad luck during the race. Got a puncture about halfway through and then uh, my seat dropped. Um, so I'm really happy to, to, to come third in, in the end of the day. What, what can you explain the, the sprint? Oh, I was leading out a teammate and I got on the AG Dezer uh, lead out train and I managed to just stay there and I went for it and managed to hold off the guys coming behind. Do you think it was possible to get the third place today? No, I, I didn't think it was possible coming into it. I've, I've done a few 1.1 races. Um, this is my first season in Europe racing on the road, so um, I'm I'm taking each race as a learning step, but I mean, I'm over the moon to come third today. And what is uh, the, the next uh, st uh, uh, race for you now, now coming up? Uh, I'm straight back to France tonight to race Tour de Ur and Loire tomorrow, which is a three day tour, so be back into it tomorrow. It's a little bit incredible to be like 18 and uh, be third of uh, a race like that with uh, great sprinters. Yeah, it really is. It's pretty cool. Christophe Laporte and Marc Serreau. Those are big names in cycling, so it's cool to be up amongst those guys. Congratulations. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Travis.